At the end of the day, my aunt and I sat in white rocking chairs on the porch of her charming Cape Cod-style beach house and chatted about the changes in Crystal Cove since I'd last visited. Waves lapped the shore. Seagulls keened overhead. In the lingering remnants of sunshine, families equipped with buckets and shovels practiced on the beach for the Labor Day Sandcastle Festival, which was set for the first weekend in September. When the conversation with my aunt waned, we drank Pinot Grigio and nibbled from a plate of veggies, hummus, and pita chips purchased from the Healthy Haven's deli counter. As the sun melted into the horizon, I yawned and said, I'd better set up house. I hadn't brought much with me. Clothes, a few of my paintings and sculptures and art supplies, some silk houseplants that I couldn't kill, and a red ching two-door cabinet with brass handles one of the gems David and I had purchased in Chinatown. In July, I'd finally divested myself of David's Brooks Brothers clothing, giving the entire wardrobe to his mother, who said she couldn't part with any of it. How could I refuse her? The cozy cottage proved to be the perfect size for me. One expansive room with a bachelorette kitchen, a bay window facing the ocean, a red brick fireplace, a wall of books, and a niche for my art supplies. Aunt Vera provided all the dishes, linens, and furniture. I nearly cried when I saw the pretty brass bed decorated in lacy white. After a long Epsom salts bath to relieve my painting sore muscles, I curled up in front of a toasty fire, a crocheted blanket tucked around my knees. Evenings in August could be chilly on the coast, and down Tootsie Rolls. I listened to Judy Garland croon on a CD player about the man that got away, and I read, in the city, after a long day at the office when my eyes ached from reading too many proposals, I would switch on the television and channel surf. I would catch up on the latest Hollywood gossip, cooking shows, and new age exercise. But in my new environment, I wanted quiet. I wanted to hear my heart beat. I devoured the hot new thriller by Meg Gardner until midnight. Before nestling beneath the duvet cover, I cracked open the window an inch so I could drink in the fresh, salty air. Around 1 a.m., I drifted into a deep sleep.